and welcome to another episode of Orgasmic Living. I am your host, Patty Alfonso, and I am delighted to share my guest with you today. She is one of my dearest, dearest friends that I've had for the longest time ever. Her name is Mia Sines. She is a love actor activist and a creator. She is a creator of magnitude. Mia and I have collaborated on books, on magazines, on classes, on all kinds of things. But one of the things that I love that she's creating is um, a group or a program. I'm not sure how to describe it, but it's called Women Making Miracles. And I love that because I, as women, as beings on this planet, the possibility to create and make miracles is endless. So I love that she is doing that in the world. She stands for love, my sweet friends. Her teachings, her group programs, her classes, everything is all about the personal development practice of self-love. So without further ado, I present to you the amazing, beautiful, courageous, bold creator of magnitude, my amazing friend, Mia Sines. Hello, my dear. How are you? <laughs> I am great. And you know what? I feel so orgasmic with you saying all those beautiful things about me. <laughs> it, just, it just lit me up. Yay. Well, hey, perfect for our show today. Um, we were talking a little bit off camera before we began, and I was talking about the, the question, right? This season on Orgasmic Living, we're going to do things a little bit differently, and I'm going to bring on amazing guests, Mia being one of them right now, and we're going to start with one question because what I have realized over the last many years of exploring the topic of orgasmic living, not only with myself and my body, but with my clients and with their bodies and in their lives. What I've realized that is that orgasmic living means something different to every single person. So amazing, Mia, tell me, what does orgasmic living mean to you? I love that. Wow. Anyone who has passion within their bones and their skin and their heart and their mind and their awareness wants to live orgasmically. Orgasmic living to me is literally living each moment, which is what everybody tries to do here, each moment in such beauty, grace, stimulation. And I don't mean stimulation as in craziness. I mean, feeling pleasure within your body, your environment, your space. It's part of joy. It's part of my puppy that you hear in the background that I just got last week, a week ago today, to well, enrich my life. Apparently your puppy has a lot to say. So he does. <laughs> how did you end up with a puppy? And how does this puppy, because she, it's a she, the puppy? It's a, it's a boy, his name is Sugar boy. Ray for Sugar Ray Leonard. Yep. Okay, so how does Sugar Ray contribute to your life being orgasmic? Tell me Ooh, wow. Um, this 2020 for most people had been a really rough year. It was really rough for me. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in April and cervical cancer. And it looked like I wasn't going to make it on the breast cancer. And all of a sudden I realized with that prognosis, I didn't want to, uh, I had, a, I heard a message within myself. I'm deeply connected. And I heard you're not going to make it on the operating table. Mm pretty powerful. So I was like, wow, okay, I'm not even going in for the pre-op then. And so that stopped everything, the whole mastectomy, chemo, radiation. Mm -hmm. And so I realized I needed something different. You and the other, my other girlfriends threw me a gala last year that actually worked to love me open. I also brought someone into my life to help love me open. I was extremely closed off due to another relationship that I'd been in for about six years. It was not intimate anymore in the sexual way in which I like. And so I developed cancer from the anger. And so I've looked at life in all ways. And if you can imagine someone who has healed cancer in 4.5 months by doctor standards, I think it was three months, but it took another six weeks to get in for all the testing. Yeah. If you can imagine healing cancer that fast, part of that would be, what does living an orgasmic life look like? What does living a passionate life, a sensual life, a life that makes you thrive and live and not die? 
So I've evaluated everything in my life over the last year. After I healed cancer, it was time for my partner and I to uh, split up. And so he went off to um, another place. And I was left for the last eight months wondering what to do with my life. And the person that was in my life, it wasn't working out. And so I realized, what did I need deepest? And I never thought about getting a dog or cat because I've had so many throughout my life. It just seemed like a lot of work. And one day I realized what I needed was unconditional love to give to, yes, baby, to give to someone that wouldn't walk away, that wouldn't disappoint me. Now, being a love activist, you'd say, or somebody who teaches love mastery and things like that, you'd say, well, doesn't she have her stuff together? Look, everybody, we all have our stuff together and we all don't have our stuff together. It's all based upon, right, our upbringing and how our emotional situation is internal. I've been working on this stuff for 13 years. So everybody has to find their space all the time. It's a, it's a practice makes proficiency thing in life. And so when I realized, wow, a puppy, what would a puppy make me feel like? My children tried to get me to get an old dog. And I was like, no, no, no I need his life. I need his life. And so um, everything was closed for since COVID, or they still call it the pandemic or COVID or whatever it is. And I couldn't find any dogs and rescues. I couldn't find any breeders breeding. And so I put something up on Facebook that said, does anybody know of a Labradoodle or a Wheaton Terrier breeder? I thought, okay, that's what I'm going to get. Well, within about five minutes, um, one of my girlfriends here on the island uh, put on there, well, my cousin's dog, they just had um, litter. And so she gave me a phone number and it wasn't, it was actually the breeder to her, to her cousin's dog. And within another five minutes, I owned Sugar Ray. When he knew where I came from, who I was, the, the breeders were like, yes. And they don't breed for profit, they breed for love. And so in that I was, so blessed. I've got the smartest dog they've ever bred. It's just the universe conspires to bring us greatness when we open to it. And so what he's done is the first night he was home here with me, the first night he was home here with me, uh, he kissed my toes and my ear. And I was like, wow, this is the most love. I, I cried. I literally cried because the tenderness was so beautiful. And Orgasmic living isn't meaning having an orgasm 24 yeah. seven. <laughs> and that's what some people think. It's about bringing the sensual, the passion, the excitement, the life, being able to touch yourself or have your puppy lick you and have it be so glorious to you that you yeah. fall in love with this being that you never want to let go. So that's what the, this puppy has done is brought me a different form of life, a different form of security things that I never even thought before that might be a possibility. I'm a new woman with him. I mean, totally, totally a new woman. And so I, I just want to, before we move, you know, I want to, something is popping here. Something is popping. Cause I want to go back to April, 2020 with your diagnosis mm -hmm. and you and I, you know, work together and we did the got, we, you know, all got together and did the gala for you. And I remember uh, talking to you about, you know, the breasts and cancer and what is that and what's going on in your life and what are you ready to change? And, and, and one of the energies that's really popping right now to bring up, especially as you bring in the puppy energy is the energy of nurturing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Which, which when we think orgasms, I think that where most people go, right, is the bedroom and the sex and whatever. But one of the energies that's really important within the world of orgasmic living is nurturing. And I remember talking to, because see, for those of you that haven't ever met Mia or worked with her or anything like that, she is one of the most loving, giving people that I have ever met. Like, you create and hold space for so many people and your heart is always so flowing outward, not only in friendship and between women and with men, but in creation, you're just so giving all of the time. And I remember even with the gala, I remember saying, Mia, this is your time to receive, right? 
this, this breast cancer, breasts are all about nurturing, mm -hmm. right? This, this energy is to teach you to receive. So I, I, you know, when you, when you self healed, right. And we all gathered around you and we all healed together. Mm -hmm. I was like, of course, like it, it made, it was, it was so easy right? Because you had opened the door to receive the nurturing and to receive the healing. And I love that in this process, right? Sometimes we go through these experiences and we just have to clean house mm -hmm. a little bit and get more present with our lives, get more present with our bodies, get more present with the things that we want. And I love that in a sense, you've kind of cleaned house and then brought in this new energy. Cause what do puppies do? They just want to love on their owners. They, do. they just want to love on them. I bet that puppy has that same energy that you embody of continuously gifting to others. So now you have a little creature being in your life that can flow all of that energy back to you, right? Because that magnificent? Oh my God, yes. I mean, what a brilliant creation. So I love that, you know, when we're talking about, well, what does orgasmic living mean to you? You're like, right now it's my dog right? And the juicy, delicious energy that this dog is bringing into your life. Um, I, I, over the years, I've discovered 10 pillars to living orgasmically. And one of them, which I think is exactly what you're bringing up here, is continuously seeking and creating and adding things to your life that bring you pleasure, that bring you joy. So I just want to kind of marry all of those things together because people will be like, oh, orgasmic living. And here we are talking about a puppy and cancer. And people are like, I don't understand. So I just wanted to tie it all together, right? right? Yeah. Orgasm, yeah. energy of orgasm is about how you create your life right. with your body. And you mentioned it before. It's about your space. It's about your car. It's about all of the things that have everything to do with living and your body and pleasure and enjoyment. And, and, and the bedroom <laughs> is just one of those places. Right, right. I love that, that for you right now, it's, it's that energy of nurturing and receiving and, and being with your dog. <laughs> and the awareness that it's the dog and, you know, you brought up the car, it's the car. And, and recently, recently somebody had said, um, what a great puppy, you know, cause there's not a lot of puppies around. And I said, well, you know, what's interesting is I never had my eyes on Labradors. And this is an English Labrador, which is larger than the American Labradors and they're more gentle. But still, I never had my awareness to it because everybody wants labs and I like unique, different things. So bringing him in, I had to shift a thought process, right? To, a, to open, but the moment I saw his baby picture, my heart flooded with everything that I wanted for myself. Yeah. I wanted for him and I still do. And that's, that's a beautiful space to reconnect, right? And to be aware, the awareness of where we're going and doing and how we're creating this stuff is the only way that it'll work. If yeah. we just say, I want this and you don't stop to watch it evolve or to give gratitude for the areas in your life where they expand out there's no room for them to expand out. There's no room for it to grow. So we really do need that awareness and that thought on our entire life, like a business plan. Yeah. Write out exactly yeah. what you want. Tell me, tell me what you said, <clears throat> I, you know, anyway, tell me, you said you had to change a thought process. Mm -hmm. What was that thought process? What, what was it that you realized? Because here's the thing too about creating our lives, which you're saying right now, but I'm, I'm going to reiterate it, mm -hmm. that the second we have a desire for something, right? First of all, if you're desiring it, it is totally possible for you to have it. Mm -hmm. What happens is that all of the stuff that we need to clear or let go of, or all the things that we need to receive in our lives, they all show up so that we can have that desire, mm -hmm. right? right? So you had this desire for more nurturing relationships, for more, you know, your body was telling you, hey, you need more nurturing relationships in your life. Mm -hmm. So let's do this cancer thing so that we can invite all those people in, right? Oh. Um, so, so you had this desire for more nurturing relationships in your lives and then you get this puppy. So what was the thought process that you had to clear or get through so that you could actually receive 
Well, that's a bigger question than just the dog. <laughs> Changing that thought process. That's Good. Let's get into it. <laughs> yes. So I just want to say really quick about the dog and let's get yeah. then into the juicy stuff. The dog about not wanting a lab. My, we get our, um, so as an intrapersonal development person, we get our um, awarenesses from our upbringing. You, you know all this, Patty, because you do this too, but the audience may not. And so growing up, my mother was God to me. Well, the second God, God was God. Everything she said, I took in, absorbed, it became mine, whether it felt good or not. And she was very judgmental about everything. So because he was so common, or not him, but the breed, I turned my nose up at it. Yes, I, I do things like that too. That's what love comes in to work on, right? To shift and change. So that was the awareness of the shift. Oh, that's my mother rejecting the breed. And so I was like, no, it's pure love. That's all I need. And of course, those dogs are gorgeous dogs anyways. It's just um, was an awareness that, that the door was slightly closed because of an early childhood moment. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I was able to shift that. Now to bring him in and to shift all that after um, my uh, main partner had left, I had another partner that we were on again, off again. And I felt... I felt very disrespected in, in many ways and, and not nurtured or loved. And I thought, this can't keep going on. What is going on here that I'm not feeling solid in relationships at the moment? Mm. And so I had to look at all that and I had to close the door on the areas that I left open that kept draining me. Right. And that means those relationships and the way I looked at them. Yeah. I do date now. And Quite, quite a bit. And um, those relationships are different because I looked at what the issue was for me, according to my history of how I behave and what I receive and what I want or what I accept from others. And I shifted all of that. Yeah. It's been, um, I took the summer off. <laughs> I'm, I'm back now, you know, it's September, but I took uh, three months off and I needed those three months. And I decided, you know, it's time to get back or else to take another three months off. And in that time, I realized that the way I communicate with men changed and well, first needed to change. And now it's changed. Our dating situation is changed. We all know that men love to send us nasty pictures and cute pictures of their wankers. And that's changed for me. You know, yeah. before I never said no, you know, and of course, it's, and so now up front, I'm like, no photos, please, unless it's of you fully clothed. Right. And, and so these are things that I've stood up for myself. And so when I started to recognize that, that's where I was like, where can I get the most nurturing? What am I missing here? Mm. And that's where I could see the bounding love. Really, the energy of this one is what I saw and felt. I just did not realize you and I are both clairvoyant. So we see things differently than a lot of people. So I could feel him coming before I even knew it. Yeah. But because of the work that we do, I was able to switch that, see it and manifest him in like that. I mean, who can get the most, I'm talking about, he's not in my area. He was in another state. Yeah. It worked out that they drove him to my house on my island. I love it. You know, who does that? This is what creation is. The universe It's playing. Yeah. We're conspiring every moment with the universe for cool. beauty and grace. If we don't want what's going on in our world, then we need to change it in our own life. And so that's, that's such an important thing that you're saying there, Mia, you know, I wanted to a couple of things that that popped while you were talking. Um, because, you know, we are we're healers, we're coaches, we work with people. And you mentioned it briefly in the beginning, you know, like, oh, shouldn't she have her stuff together. But the reality is that we're all here working on our stuff. Mm -hmm. right? We're, we may just be a couple of steps ahead from our next client, right? We're just, we're constantly doing the work, doing the work. And so no, we're not perfect, but at least for my own, like, I know that I'm, I'm the kind of coach and the healer that walks her talk. Like I'm continuously mm -hmm. evolving, right? That's really, really important to me is to continuously be evolving and growing. And when you talked about like, um, 
your relationship with your mom and the nurturing and the caring, it, it pinged something in my universe because I, I, and, and I've also been on a bit of a, like a three month sabbatical, just doing the same that you are. Like it was just my next level of healing. And for me, my next level of what was next in my life. And one of the things that I had become aware of a while ago that I had been working through was my inner conflict confusion around what kindness is, what nurturing is, what love is, and what abuse is. Because they're all wrapped together from our early childhood. Exactly. So, yeah. And it's, in my world, you know, when you are someone who grows up with some kind of trauma or abuse, right? So there's the abuse and then there's like, oh no, but I love you. Then those things get mixed together. They do. And they that do. is within our bodies. It's in our cellular memory. It's in our psyche. And this has been an unraveling for me for years. I think the first time I realized cognitively, oh, I'm confused about what kindness is and about I'm confused about these energies right was like six years ago and now it's a continuous sort of like I call it like like pulling apart the pieces of like oh no wait this actually feels more like abuse to me this actually is more okay oh that's what open unconditional love feels like oh okay no that's a little so it's a continuous journey of unraveling what has been sort of like twisted and mixed up in your psyche and in your body so i, I love that you brought that up and i wanted to just sort of put that out there for for you know whoever is yeah. listening um, you know, we, I, most of us have probably heard your point of view creates your reality, your thoughts create your reality. And to, to wrap up on what you were saying, um, not wrap up, but like to put my little button on it, <laughs> you know, whatever you have in your life is your creation. It's yeah. your creation. You are creating it right Absolutely. from whatever is happening in your psyche, in your body, in your cellular memory. Mm -hmm. And that was a tough pill for me to swallow because no one wants to believe that they're purposefully or unconsciously creating unhealthy relationships. Mm -hmm. But I also got to that point where I was like, oh my God, here is another unhealthy relationship with this energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need to go inward. There's yeah. something here that I need to dive deep into and to work out. And so that's the work, you know, that's the work that we're all here doing is unraveling, right? So that we can have everything that we desire, everything that we're asking for, everything that we want to create. And, and that's the process of living orgasmically. One of the things that I always talk about in regards to living orgasmically is the willingness and the ability to be present with everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everything about yourself too, whether it's something that's not so pretty to look at or not so you know like ooh ooh that was I'm so, ooh. Yeah. so <laughs> one thing that I learned from you years ago that has been implemented into my own life my work and everything Patty is I'm just stick on my tongue slightly too because she's like really what is it um <laughs> you taught me to be still and ask my body what she wants yeah ask her what she wants to eat how she's feeling and so <clears throat> mm, the emotion, it. the emotions that I work with, the codes, the stuff with people, healing that interpersonal stuff. I actually say part of the work is you stop and you, act, I mean, this is part of the work besides being very gentle, because just like a sunflower opens to the sun, we also close Yeah. and there's trauma. So we have to be open to everything to grow because that's where the natural flow is. And so we must stop all the time and ask ourselves until we get it going. This is like a mindset um, uh, awareness tip. Um, it is part mindset. Mm -hmm. You ask yourself, how am I feeling? So set your alarm three times a day. How am I feeling? What am I thinking? And if in that moment you're feeling great, wonderful, you want to reproduce it, create an imprint there. Yeah. It feels great. I want more of this. And so I have this. I can have this feeling of deliciousness and because that's what I've noticed too, is we open, right? And there's this big, big opening and there's joy and, and amazingness and happy. And then because we're not used to 
tolerating that openness, sometimes we create the closure, mm -hmm. like on purpose, right? Yeah. That could be part of the psyche too, is just to like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I don't know if I can tolerate this. Oh, <laughs> let me just oh. shut it down and, and create a little drama for a little bit, just cause I'm bored. <laughs> and I don't know mm -hmm. if I can really be happy all of the time. <laughs> exactly. I want to say one thing and I want to get into what you just said about closing it down. Yeah. Um, about the other parts. So if you're upset and you stop, you need to stop when you're upset and say, how do I feel? Yeah. Breathe. How do I feel? Breathe. Calm yourself down. I don't like this feeling. Okay. How can I get out of it? Well, Patty or Mia tells me to dance, to listen to music, to change my thoughts, to do this, to do that. So literally it's about shifting that space away so that you can learn how to recreate it. Now, as we grow further into the emotions and about healing all that, then we get into other places about stopping and surrendering in that space of despair to work through it, but not in the beginning because it's too confusing and people get trapped down at a hole. So we're opening us up to shifting our awareness, knowing even what our body feels like. I work with a lot of women who can't have orgasms and whose bodies can't be touched and it's beautiful because very quickly with the work they open they can they can be um they can begin to have orgasms their bodies can be touched i remember one of my clients who actually went through the um the love mastery certification program as a coach she said to me she could not make love with her husband without cringing this was trauma this was not her not liking her husband she could not feel her body she didn't have orgasms. And so she came to a session and said, I can feel the, the water in the shower on my skin for the first time ever. <laughs> yeah. And then what, what's transpired, you know, after that was brilliant. Her life changed. So we have to know what we feel like inside and what we desire. That's the important part. You said about closing it down, right? The drama, we just want to close it and shut it down. You have to really be aware of our own stuff. If you can't look inside because you're afraid, then you're not going to get healed. Yeah. There were years when I would do these programs. I'm talking about since like, I was, since I was 24, I would do little things and I'd be like, no, I can't, I can't face my mother. I, can't, I don't want to deal with this. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. And guess what happened when she died? I was down for a year or so because I literally needed to finally surrender and heal all the stuff that I kept you know, hiding myself from. Yeah. So we have to be aware of what needs to be healed and take step by step by step. And I love that you're saying step by step, Mia, because look, I said, I became cognitively aware of something six years ago mm -hmm. and I'm still continuously unraveling it. And I wanna say for the people listening that it's really important to not force Mm -hmm. right the healing right that's right especially when it comes to your body if you force the body into healing it's actually going to have the opposite effect yeah. when you're ready when your body is ready it will happen it will open you will open let's right? give an example of of what happened with my body during right. the answer thing but the the most before but the most important thing about that is to just when you're just being just presence presence oh wow okay i'm feeling closed off right now and just being present with yourself and pr being present with that energy without judging yourself without judging the situation and then just being with it just that is going to create a shift right. just being right. with it and not having the fear push through it or force through it right. just want to be present with it and then allow it yeah. allow it to unfold allow it to open allow it to to shift and melt right there's 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 nothing that needs to be pushed right, right. and i think this is also just a very feminine way of healing <laughs> <laughs> right i sort of medical yeah, mom, right? i was like <laughs> it's it's a very feminine relaxed receiving open way of being with your body and being with yourself right well, women women take in women take in we take it men in we take things into our body men add on stuff so when you say you open to receive or you're opening we do naturally right yeah in the feminine yeah so that's the beauty Finally, 
after cancer, finally, for the first time in my life, I'm not a child, so you can see for the first time, it's been a long time. Yeah. I love, mm. love my body. Yeah. I love the way I eat and I don't have fear for the first time in my life. And mm. I have lost a little child off my body. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm losing weight very rapid. Yeah. Um, the cancer kept craving sugar. And so it adds on to feed the cancer. And, and I did gain a lot of weight. And I've lost more than half of my body weight that I gained. It's shocking. It's amazing. It's been fun because mm -hmm. even the work that I learned with you yeah. as great friends and going to your stuff and working with you, it's about the acceptance of who you are mm -hmm. and your body and not getting caught up in the fear and the frustration and listening. This listening part is the most important thing because if I didn't listen to my body, I couldn't fall in love with losing or releasing what wasn't there originally, but I added it on or it came on my body. This is not my original body form. This is heavy. It's heavier than I was when I had my original body form. And so, and I mean, you know, I'm not talking about spiritually in another lifetime. I'm talking about here as me assigns in this lifetime before all the tragedy hit me or before I allowed the trauma to turn into drama to affect my life. Yeah. So literally I have fallen in love with feeling my body. How many people can say they can feel their body losing weight? Yeah. I can feel my body releasing. I and I just got on the scale today. I'm down 10 pounds in like 10 days. I'm not even trying. Yeah. I'm shocked. I'm just like, what is going on? But also giving gratitude to the universe, because this is what I put into play about my body with the universe. Yeah. You know, that when, after the gala that you guys threw me, I felt so loved that I knew, and it only took me like three days later to have a conversation with God and say to God, I'm not going to die. I don't think you're going to take me out of here. I'm doing your work and I need a new piece of my soul. I need vitality. I need life. I need breath. I need sex. I need a man to look at me and tell me I'm beautiful. Yeah. I want to be an artist. Everything happened. I, did you hear that? I want to be an artist. Yeah. Everything happened. Yeah. Everything happened. And so we have to be aware of what we want. We have to not be afraid of doing it. If I didn't have that gala that you guys put together for me, I might not have realized because if we're not fully you present, are. what honey? <laughs> How loved you are. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and the thing is, is that's part of my wounding, my younger wounding, not being wanted, not feeling I'm important enough, having my identical twin sister die and force my birth three months early, being called um, the Ill illegitimate bastard child, the black one, the black sheep, things like that, that I was different because I had a different father. Right. And which turns out three years ago, we found out that my DNA, I'm the same as my brothers and sisters. My mom just had an affair and claimed some man. Well, I shouldn't say it. He's my daddy. I love him. Claimed my daddy is my daddy. And I'm proud of Frank Science, the most magnificent man I know. And I've built a relationship with myself about George Blanchard, my biological father. He's been gone since the 1980s, since the 80s. I guess I don't have to say 1980s. The since the 1680s, I'm that old. You're <laughs> in the 80s. So it's really about what we want to, you know, our mind and our body and our spirit all work together. They have to be activated together. This is a body, mind, and spirit place for us to be in. If we allow one to not be part of our soul essence and, right. and in that body, yeah. mind, and spirit, we're not functioning on the level that we're supposed to. If we're just in soul, like we meet a lot of spiritual people and they don't want to pay attention to the body or the mind, they're not activating and they're not working in the way for harmony in which they're supposed to. It has to be a complete trinity, body, mind, and spirit. And what I love about, what I love about your story and, and this experience, because, you know, uh, I love saying like, it never shows up the way you think that it will. <laughs> and the body as the body and the universe, because sometimes we ask for something and the universe throws us like a kind of curveball, and we think, oh, this isn't what I asked for. And it's actually exactly what you needed to get exactly what you were asking for, right? Right, right? And the body is the same way. 
the mm -hmm. body, the, it's the same way. If, if we, your experience with cancer, you could have taken that and just like said, okay, fine. I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Right. But you didn't, you, right. you did the work, you did the healing. You looked at what needed to be looked at. You healed yourself. And now you're on the other side of that creating bigger, better, brighter, much more deliciously than you were before. So it never shows up the way you think it will in so many areas of your life. And if you're willing to just receive what is showing up and allow it to, you know, filter through your life and your body and the things that are happening and you allow it to tickle, right? I kind of want to say like tickle all the molecules of your being. Oh, allow it then it can it can pop the things that need to pop the things that need to leave the things that need to change so that you can really live that orgasmic life that you're asking for and i i love it i love it because you know i mean people think cancer and they're like well my life is over that's it you know i'm never going to recover from this i'm going to get it again you know whatever all this stuff comes up around especially you know uh that particular dis-ease but that's right. that's all it is it's just a, it's, a moment of dis-ease and in right? truly, if you're and willing that, to show up and do the work and show up for yourself you can create it as a miracle right when you is, spoke you know, of you spoke of uh women making miracles yeah yeah um it's interesting because deep inside we know who we are and our earthly experience from the moment we're born has changed who we know we are to be and so i think it was five years ago my business originally was the passion news and then it was me assigned and then i branded into women making miracles as a community leader and having um classrooms with i think there's 1100 people in that in that group and things like that it's about community about love about miracles now, because I'm a healer and one that's a little bit different, I'm metaphysical. Um, the thing, the thing about that is, I, I guess I recognized for the, at least the last twenty years. Well, I've always known we're all miracles, but first I had to recognize I was, and yeah. that was after nine eleven. Mm. With deep soul searching, it took me two years about my life to be because I was very due to my C for complex early childhood or war victim. CPTSD, mm -hmm. uh, I collapsed in uh, with 9-11. I lived in LA by the uh, airport and they were going to bomb that, they said next. And I just, I was triggered. I had young children and I, I snapped. And so it took me two years to get myself understand. Well, I was back in about uh, six months. I was back to functioning. Mm -hmm. But it took another two years to understand my own magnificence. Why does it take humans that long? And I'll, and I'll be honest here, because of the 9-11 thing, and I'm telling you, I snapped, I snapped. I actually was in a psychiatric place in, uh, went to Arizona, Wickenburg, Arizona, mm -hmm. the Meadows, the most fantastic place. One is um, different than most places. It has a lot of celebrities, which allowed me the fortitude to be able to have the highest care that I needed or a more unique non-traditional care, I would say, mm -hmm. we were able to uh, really work on our stuff. So every day in my group session that I was in, the uh, head person of the facility would come into that group and say, because she, I was only there because of this crack, this mental thing, everybody else was there because of bipolar or um, drugs or, you know, whatever it is, sex addiction, alcohol, all that. It was a treatment center. And so she'd come in and she'd say, Mia, do you know that you're a miracle? She knew my history. No, obviously she read me. She knew who I was. And I would say, we're all miracles. Mm -hmm. What I learned from that is I never, you know, I thought I was putting everybody up with me with God. I was not claiming myself. Yeah. I am myself. Everybody else is out here. This is my universe. <laughs> my yeah. universe had gotten so shaken and rattled like a snow globe growing up that I didn't know that I was that valuable. I didn't know it. That's another reason why in the depths of cancer, when we go down low, I went back down low to not knowing that I was worth it. And that's why that gall meant so much. Yeah. That's why it helped save my life. 
And so in, in that space where she kept saying, did you know you're a miracle? Every day she'd come in. I'm like, why is she embarrassing me? You know, but if she didn't do that, I not, I would not have spent the next two years contemplating, thinking about listening to things about being miracles. Mm. And I would not have shifted and had a healing in 2008, which brought me into coaching. Yeah. That was, it took me that long. Plus there was a head injury at target. It took me that long. The universe has been trying to get your attention forever. Well, it's had my attention. I also think the universe, not the universe, something has been trying to take me away for years because I keep having these massive healings. Wow. And being born, you know, with a sister that dies Mm. and all these things, I've healed blindness. My, I had a ruptured, uh, my, uh, uh, pupils ruptured from a migraine and I'm not supposed to be able to see, but I do. I had a healing. I healed on a mountaintop on vacation when I was 15. My um, femur uh, got snapped in uh, on the black diamond um, skiing. And see, the way I heal is our awareness is with the divine. And I have to understand, we have to understand, I know where I come from. I know who I am. I know I am the infinite child of God, of the universe. Mm -hmm. Now to think about that and contemplate that is scary for people. Yeah. But when you know that alignment, it's like, it's coming right down to you. It's nothing's cut off or missed. And so I've, I've had these remarkable healings that most people don't, don't work through that easily without, you know, without whatever. So you're such such an example, Mia, you are such an example of our innate ability to heal, Mm. you know, because it's, you've just like beat all of the odds and all of these different kinds of experiences. You've just beat the odds. You are the perfect example of our body and our being and our innate ability to heal ourselves and to nurture ourselves and self-love ourselves. And what, I mean, no wonder it's, it's the work that you do. And, and, I do right? and that's the thing, right? Is that, you know, my own disconnection with my body is exactly what makes me a, an amazing person to help other women connect to their bodies because yeah. I've been there. I've, yeah. I've been totally disconnected. I've been totally just like out of my body and out in the ethers and, and, and all of that. And all of my own personal work in bringing myself into my body is what helps, what makes me the perfect person to help someone else. Just like you're the perfect person to empower women to know that they are miracle creators, men or women, whoever, I think you work with both. Um, um, And I I love that. I love that. Mia, I'm so freaking grateful for you and Mm -hmm. so honored that you took this time to talk to me today and to everyone that's listening. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) You're my girl. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I just, you know, I adore you. I adore you. Tell, I adore you. Um, we both have free gifts to offer everyone. So um, do you want to tell people about your free gift? Really sure. quickly and then sure. I'll put the link. You, you'll be able to find it somewhere, anywhere where you're watching this <laughs> or yeah. listening to this, just yeah. check the description and the links will be there. Tell <laughs> us, cause I looked at the page and it's absolutely magnificent. So what, what are you going to offer our audience today? So the, my free gift is the treasure trove. It's a, it's a free membership platform site where you sign up and you get downloaded to you. And you also go in there and and keep retrieving stuff. All of the self-love stuff that I work with my clients on my private VIP clients. When people work with me in the self-love revolution classroom, which Patty's also a teacher in, um, or any of the other stuff that I do, I always recommend that they go to the treasure trove and download the work because the book Mirror Mirror is a good example into how to create and shift and change who we are. Spaces like you're starting to improve yourself, heal, you're feeling better, amazing, then all of a sudden you go downward. It's like I've fallen and I can't get up. I call that deep pockets. I take you through how to get out of your deep pocket. I believe we are action forward moving people. We are not stuck and we should not be. This is our choice. And I am a thriver, not a survivor. I used to be a survivor. I am a thriver. In 2008, I declared to the universe, I shall shall thrive. 
And ever since then, I've never looked back. And thank you for reminding me, reminding me of who I am, Patty, because, you know, I've got the puppy and I'm a little frustrated at times, you know, running around, chasing him up and down, having him cry back there. But yet it's still love and orgasmic because your allowance allowed me to have him on the show with me instead of me having to get a babysitter. No. <laughs> it's really, it's really All beautiful. All energies are welcome. All it's energies are welcome. Yes, in our yes, yes. So that's them. my free gift. And it's, it's so powerful. I love, I love that you call it the treasure trove. I think that's absolutely beautiful. And of course, you are the perfect person to uh, support people out of, what did you call it? I call it the black hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the deep pocket. <laughs> the deep pockets. Of course, of course, that's that's your gift. I love it. Thank you, Mia. Thank you so much. And for those of you that are curious about what the 10 pillars to living orgasmically are, you can take the orgasmic living quiz at orgasmiclivingquiz.com. How easy does it get? Yeah. Um, thank you, Mia. Thank you so much for sharing you, with us what your experience with orgasmic living is and what it means to you. Because again, I think it's different for everyone. And, and it's time, especially now after and during and what we're going through and what we're experiencing as a planet yes. um, that we really, you know, dive into what is living orgasmically. And let me go out there and go for it. Cause that's really a healing energy for our bodies, for our lives and for the world. So thank you again, Mia, for being here. I adore you. I'm sure that we'll see each other soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <And some> other... <laughs> yeah, Bye for now, everyone. Thank you.